Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you a script that allows you to send an email out from an AutoHotKey script without the need to install an email client such as Microsoft Outlook on your PC. So I just used the script on the right to send an email out from this Gmail account to my Outlook account on the left hand side. So that's the email that you see that is sent from my script. This script comes from this URL, which is a forum post on AutoHockey website. So you can get the script from there, or you can alternatively access my modified version of the script from my website as well. This script uses what's called CDO. CDO stands for Collaboration Data Object. CDO is a Microsoft technology for building messaging or collaboration applications. And this is what allows us to send emails out without going through an email client like Microsoft Outlook. This script Please note that won't always work with all email providers for reasons unknown. For example, they may outright block it or require a premium account to send emails this way. But however, I have tested out Gmail, Navigator, which is my internet service provider, Naver, which is a Korean email service provider, all of which worked. However, Yahoo Mail did not work. I also tested out Outlook.com, but it didn't work with this script, but I figured out another way to send an email out from Outlook.com and that is going to be covered in my next video. And the reason why this script does not work for Outlook.com will be explained a little bit later. And so today I'm going to use Gmail primarily to demonstrate to you and help you get set up so that you can also send emails out from your Gmail account as well. Now starting with the first bit of the script, it first asks you for the password that goes with the email that you're going to send the email from. Now if you don't put in anything in the input box, then it's going to end the script there. The next thing it's going to do is create a, a CDO object using com object create and put that into message and then set the from field of the message as the value that comes after this, which is the same as the value that you see on the left hand side. The value you see up here, hello, is called alias and alias is like a name for your email address. So if I go back out to the inbox, you can see how the from field has uh, some, some sort of a header that says hello instead of my email address. You can simply just remove that if you want your email address to be displayed instead of your alias or you can leave that in as well. Let me just change this to something else like Gmail. And I'm also going to change the from email address from Juho test email to Juho test email one, which is an email account that I just created um, in order to help you get set up. If you're doing this for the first time, you will be coming across a stumbling block for Gmail and I'll walk you through how you to get around that. And then the next one is two, and that's where the recipient's email address goes in. And if you wanna add multiple accounts, then simply add a column down here and then add new email addresses afterwards like that okay and then the next one is the carbon copy cc and bcc blind carbon copy and then you have the subject and the text body now i'm just going to comment this out and uncomment this one which is html body um, to demonstrate to you that you can also send out an HTML email in, or in, in case you want to apply formatting. And then next up is the add attachment command or method which allows you to attach files. So if you want to attach multiple files, you can just simply duplicate the lines and update the reference to the file path. And the two files I'm going to um, attach onto my email are this text document, which has this string, how are you doing? And then uh, image file that has a small image of a cat like that. And these attachments will be uh, attached to my email that I'm going to send out. And then afterwards, what's going to happen is I'm going to create, this, is, this script is going to create an object and call that object fields. And then afterwards, it's going to add key value pair information. So SMTP server is going to be the key. And what comes after the assignment operator is going to be the value. SMTP server is an important information that you have to provide. If you're using Gmail, you can use this value, but if you're using something else, then you have to update this SMTP server name to 
the one that fits that email service provider that you're going to use and you can find that information from Google which I'm going to show you in a bit. A fields SMTP uh, server port is set to 465. 465 stands for SSL secure SSL secure socket layer so your username and the password will be encrypted when you send it over to the server. There is another one called 25 which is unencrypted and this is very often blocked by your internet service provider so you cannot probably won't be able to use that. Now there's another one called 587 which stands for TLS. TLS is transport layer security and it's sort of like a slightly upgraded version of SSL but unfortunately CDO does not support TLS so it does not support 587 so you have to use 465 and note that some email service providers use 465 while some others use 587 so outlook.com outlook smtp server uses 587 instead of 465 in which case you won't be able to use this script you won't be able to use cdo in order to send emails out from outlook although please note that sometimes when they say they only accept 587 465 might also work so test it out i know that's the case because my korean email service provider neva did allow for acceptance of 465 when they said for example neva smtp server when they said in the result the SMTP port is 587 so if you want to try your email service provider that says 587 for the port number try out with 465 just in case it works. Now the next one is to set the usage of secure socket layer to true and then the next two are the default values you have to put in in order to send the email out and then send username is going to be the email address that you're going to send the email out from. Let me just update it to my newly created account and then the password is the password that you input through your input box and then this is the session timeout in 60 seconds. Now this value here is called iConfiguration Interface and I have provided on my website a URL link to more information on this part but for the purpose of just sending out an email from the script we don't really need to understand exactly what this does. But basically this is a string of text you need to put in later on to set all of these up in the message. So this string goes into this variable called schema and then what we're going to do later is we're going to create a variable called fld and message which is the object that we have created up here. Configure the fields. Now we're going to configure the fields using the object because we created a lot of key value pairs. We're going to shove them into the configuration and that is going to be done by using a for loop. So you can see how there is a for loop and field and value. Field refers to the key and value refers to the value. And FLD, which is this one, dot item brackets schema which is this string here and dot which is which does nothing it's just connecting these two and then field is the key so in the first iteration of this loop what we're going to get for the field is smtp server and then it will be given a value of the value of the key value pair which is going to be smtp.gmail.com and then it's going to and this line is going to iterate through all of this and then eventually you will do an update of that and then send the message out like that. So if I go ahead and run this, but before I run that, I think this is the newly created email. I'm going to show you how I'm going to encounter a critical security alert that Gmail is going to send to me. So if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to get an email sent to my newly created gmail account like that and that is because so it will say sign in attempt was blocked and if i go to check activity it will say a suspicious app was blocked from accessing your account which is my script here it's considering my script to be a suspicious app and i'm just gonna go ahead and click yes it was me because it was me 
then afterwards it's going to say less secure app is blocked so this is the hurdle that we need to go through we need to allow less secure apps not to be blocked and in order to do that you just go to account.google.com and once you get there let me just make sure that this is the account okay so this is the account that i need to unblock the less secure app so while you're here you go to security and if you have two-step verification turned on then you need to turn it off otherwise you won't be able to see this option less secure app access now if you click that you'll be able to turn on the access to less secure apps and therefore from here you are going to be able to send an email out from this gmail account so if I go ahead and try this out again and put in the password and hit send and it will send it out so you saw that going away that little uh, play button on the top and so in my Outlook email I should have received that email here we go so it says gmail that's my alias and hello there and I will have the attachments attached like that so let me just click into that can't open the image file for some reason maybe if I hit refresh there we go so the image of the cat is appearing and then the text file that says how are you doing are attached onto my email so this is how you can send an email out using an auto archive script through CDO now let me test it out with uh, two other email service providers that I have which are the first of which is my netvigator.com and then uh, this time let me maybe I can send this email out to my gmail as well to see whether it's going to arrive in gmail as well so I'm just going to type out uh, juho test email one at gmail.com I think that was the email address juho test email one.com that's correct and cc bcc and subject I'll leave that as it is and all of this I'll leave as it is and um, and because I'm sending from another account here I need to update this SMTP server and also I'm going to change the from uh, send username as well to in order to find out SMTP server of Netvigator I'm just gonna type out in my Netvigator in my Google um, search string and then here I should be able to get the SMTP server name right here so that's what I have to provide and then notice how the server port is set to be 465 465 here so this is going to work so let me go ahead and send out my email put in the password and so it should have sent so let me go to my gmail i think uh, from experience I noticed that Navigator when it sends to Gmail it does take a little while for it to arrive in the Gmail inbox right here so I still haven't got it it might have landed in the spam mailbox so I'll check that out later but in my um, why does it say draft um, in my Outlook account I did get the email Navigator with the image of the cat and the text document so let me check out my gmail gmail's not getting it for some reason uh, maybe if i go to spam it's not in spam so i think it just takes a little bit of time so i'm just going to leave the recording on and come back when the email is received all right there you go so that took um I think that took about five minutes uh, so I don't know why Gmail takes so long to receive emails I, th I think there must be uh, some kind of filtering that is going that does a lot of checks on the incoming emails um, but there you go so that's how you can send an email out from other email service providers as well
actually let me just go and click into it and you can see the image of the cat and the text document so that's all good now i'm going to this time send an email out from my korean email service provider called neighbor and then maybe i can use alias this time as well neighbor and i'll send to both of them and maybe I'll skip the attachment to see if the email arrives quickly in Gmail inbox as well. Maybe it's because of the attachment, I'm not sure. Um, I will have to update this SMTP server, which I will get from Google. Uh, Neva SMTP server. Then I'll get the information right here. So I just need to populate that with this. Now notice how the SMTP port says 587, but I'm just going to leave it as 465 because as per my testing, 465 was also acceptable. So I'm just, I'm just going to use that and also update the send username to this bit. And let me go ahead and run it now. Um, I think this was the password. Okay, so let me check Outlook first. There we go. Uh, email from Neva and that is the email that I sent out and then let's see okay so I've got the email straight away as well for Gmail potentially because it was of the attachment so maybe you can maybe I can uh, go back to navigator and then remove the attachments and send it out again Okay, sent, and hopefully, okay, there you go. I think it was because of the attachment that it took so long for Gmail to receive the email. But here, yeah, so I've got the email here, and I also got the email in my Gmail inbox as well. Now, if I had changed this to Outlook, for example, the email account that you see on the left-hand side, which is juholi 123 outlook.com i think it was let me just double check that to her lee one two three outlook.com there we go so let me send this uh from my outlook account and uh, update this field here with my outlook account and let's say outlook uh, smtp server in google and i'll get the information right here i'll populate that with this and SMTP port explicitly says it's 587 but I'm just going to go ahead and run this with 465 to see if I get the email in my inbox so I go ahead and run it put in the password and then see what we get and you see how this play button is not going away because it's hanging and I think about um, I think in about a minute's time or so let me just leave it on to see what error message that I get if I'm going to get any I'll just leave it on to see all right I came back and here we go so transport failed to connect to the server and if I change this to eight five I'm uh, sorry five eight seven and run it I think it just didn't work. Let me try again. There we go. It just failed to work because CDO doesn't support 587. So this is it. And in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how you can get around this port 587. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.